if Parliament refuses to allow Brexit to happen and instead uh, gets its way and decides to delay everything until January or, or possibly longer, uh, in those circumstances can the government continue with this. And uh, with great regret, I must go directly to the point that the Honourable Gentleman uh, raises. With great regret, I, will, I must say that the, bu the bill will have to be pulled and we will have to go forward, uh, much as the right Honourable Gentleman may not like it, we will have to go forward to a general election. Mm. I will argue, I will argue at that election, I will argue, no Mr Speaker, I will argue at that election, let's get Brexit done and the leader of the opposition will make his case to spend 2020 having two referendums, one on Brexit and one on Scotland and the people Mr Speaker will decide. Well, Boris Johnson there potentially drawing the battle lines as he sees it for the next general election. Well, somebody that's been following proceedings today and might have a clue as to what's going to happen next is John Craig, Chief Political Correspondent at Sky News. John, tell me, what are the standout features today? Evening, Nigel. I was watching your barnstorming speech in Strasbourg this morning. Yes, it was interesting in that it was Mr Juncker's last day in the European oh, yes. Parliament. Well, we're we're and, seeing, uh, I suppose, Juncker's last stand, just as uh, we're seeing Burko's last stand, really, in Parliament these next few days, because, of course, he's quitting at the end of October. Yes. Um, can yes. I just correct you on one thing? The first yeah. vote is actually the second reading vote, oh, because sorry. then they vote after that. If, it, if that goes through, they then vote vote on the timetable for the committee stage. Obviously, if it's defeated, there's no point in going ahead to the committee stage because it's been defeated. Uh, the standout moments, well, been quite a few, actually. Uh, Boris Johnson seemed to be promising people all sorts of things. Every time a, 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 an MP of either side got up and said, uh, can the Prime Minister give me an assurance? Oh, yes, absolutely. Workers' rights? Yes. Environmental safeguards? Yes. But, of course, he got a bit unstuck, uh, as the government has throughout this debate on all these new proposals for uh, Northern Ireland and customs and form filling and the, the customs border in the Irish Sea and so on. Um, in the last half hour or so, We've had a really uh, angry speech from Sammy Wilson, the uh, Brexit spokesman from the Democratic Unionist Party. Uh, so I'm assuming the DUP are going to vote against the government because they are furious with these new arrangements. The other thing that was interesting is we've had all these Tory Eurosceptics, the veterans like Ian Duncan Smith, uh, Sir Bill Cash, John Redwood uh, and so on, all get up and say, well, actually, there's a lot wrong with this bill. Uh, the proposals for Northern Ireland, very unhappy happy about hope the government will think again and yet of course because they're loyal to boris johnson they're all going to uh, vote uh, for him um but the other thing on the labor side um it was interesting during mr corbyn's speech uh, you had a few uh, labor pro brexit well not pro brexit mps that's unfair mps representing brexit seats lisa nandy and gloria de piero wigan and ashfield um pleading with Mr Corbyn to be allowed uh, to uh, vote for the government's bill uh, in support of their constituents in their leave voting constituencies. He was very polite to them. Uh, Jim Fitzpatrick, who's MP for, uh, I think it's Poplar and Canning Town down yeah. in the East End, uh, he actually uh, said to Mr Corbyn, are you going to take the whip away from me if I vote for the bill? And uh, Mr Corbyn didn't answer that one. So, both votes are going to be tight. Obviously, if the if the second if they get the second reading, they then go on to debate, uh, sorry, to vote on uh, whether they have this committee stage, which is three hours tonight, twelve tomorrow, and eight on Thursday. And the government wants the government's intention is to get the bill through the Commons on Thursday evening, probably around about eight o'clock in the evening. Then send it to the House of Lords. Then it come back to the Commons some point next week, and they get royal assent. They hope in time for. Um, uh, the end at the end of the month, Halloween, which is what Mr. Johnson wants. So it could well be then that Boris needs to ask for a ten day extension from the European Council. He doesn't seem to want to do that, though. Um, he's, uh, he's been, the number 10 have been telling us this afternoon that he's going to make some phone calls this evening. We assume that's because he thinks he's going to lose the vote. He doesn't seem to want even the shortest extension. Now, if the government were to say, say they win the second reading, they get uh, uh, yeah. approval for the bill in principle, but then they lose the timetable proposals, uh, they, their options are, well, the, Mr. Johnson's talking about 
uh, calling a general election. We perhaps talk about that in a second because that's easier said than done, as we've seen twice before. But why doesn't he just, one option, of course, he could just say, as you've suggested, why not just say to the opposition, OK, you want more time for the committee stage of this bill, uh, we'll give you a few extra days. And as you say, Nigel, that would simply mean a fairly short extension. But he's being all, ma all macho and doesn't seem to want to do that. Yeah, and of course there is a possibility that somebody in the European Council vetoes it and we're out on the 31st of October on, de on, on, on a WTO Brexit, but it doesn't look very likely. And I thought, uh, I thought uh, actually that uh, the, the attitude uh, here in Strasbourg today towards extension was, was, was pretty relaxed. And of course to get a general election, well, we've got the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, but there is a way around that, isn't there? There's a, there's a fancy way of doing it. You can, I think it's called a, uh, oh, it's, I forget what it's called now, but there is a, you can say, it's called a notwithstanding motion. So you, they, the motion would say, notwithstanding the uh, Fixed Term Parliaments Act, which demands a, tw a two-thirds majority, 434 MPs, uh, we call for a general election. Um, well, that, that's what they might well do. Um, uh, is it some Tory MPs are saying it's all bluff? This uh, they don't, they're not sure he's being serious about it. Um, he said he's going to do it. I suppose. Well, I, I'd wonder if they will just go for the fixed term Parliament route, or they'll go for the notwithstanding route. Um, we, I mean, Mr. Mr. Obviously, Mr. Johnson wants a general election, so he says. Uh, not all Tory MPs are terribly enthusiastic, and we know that Labour's split between those uh, around Mr. Corbyn who'd like one. Um, because Mr Corbyn wants to talk about anything other than Brexit. But there are a lot of Labour MPs, um, possibly a majority in the Parliamentary Labour Party, who'd prefer to wait, get Brexit out of the way, and then uh, then have a general election. So it's uncertain whether we will get our pre-Christmas yeah. election. It really is. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, John, if Boris does manage to get this treaty through uh, and we leave on that basis on the 31st of October, something to look forward to for all of us is that Monsieur Barnier today in his speech said the trade negotiations for the next stage of this would last at least three years. So isn't that fun? Well, well there have been all sorts of predictions, haven't there, about the length of time those would take. I mean, various MPs have said, oh, when we did a deal with, was it Canada or somebody? People have quoted various uh, precedents, haven't they, for how long mm. all these things were would take. Do you remember a while ago, I'm sure you do, I think it was Liam Fox when he was the International Trade Secretary, I think he said a, a trade deal would be, what was it, the easiest thing in human history or some phrase like that. He did, yes, yes. <laughs> he, he's, not, he's not saying it now, is he? Well, <laughs> he spoke in the debate on Saturday. Um, I mean, my goodness, I mean, I've sat through the whole of Saturday and the whole of today. I'm just looking up at the screen, I see Sir John Hayes, veteran Tory backbencher, is speaking now. Um, what, I'll tell you one interesting thing that's happened today. Sir Oliver Letwin, who many MPs blame for messing everything up uh, yes. at the weekend. Now um, regretting it all. Yeah, well, I don't know whether he's... I assume he is, yes, because he's now <laughs> said he's going to... I think Oliver... I mean, some people will say that Oliver Letwin is weak as a, weak as a jelly and wet as a sponge uh, because he's now talking about voting for uh, the government uh, both in the second reading and in the, um, the programme motion as it's called. Uh, so from uh, really uh, causing the government all sorts of grief and inconvenience on Saturday. He seems to fall into line. Extraordinary. John, an exciting evening and thank you for filling us in and briefing us. Well, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we don't know how these votes are going to go. We really, really don't. Although I suspect John is right. Uh, you know, Tory MPs being very critical uh, of what Boris has brought back from Brussels, but probably still going to vote for it. We will see.